Greetings, sisters and brothers. The title of our message for the second Sunday of Easter is In Order That You May Have Life. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So sisters and brothers, Easter is not just a day. It is an entire season. It is um, seven is the biblical number of fullness and perfection and wholeness. It is seven times seven days of uh, Easter that we celebrate, really 50 days of Easter. Um, to think about the way that the resurrection applies to our lives. And so uh, for today's gospel from John 20, verses 19 through 31, uh, we read that it is Easter evening and Jesus' disciples are all huddled together behind locked doors in the, in the upper room where they had celebrated their last supper with Jesus. And it says they're behind locked doors for fear, because of fear. They feared that had what, what had happened to Jesus may happen to them. Um, but how appropriate for us at this time in our lives to talk about fear and the crippling effect of fear. Um, I cannot think of fear without thinking of a woman I just loved and knew years ago. She was beautiful and young and healthy, smart, talented, had a great career, just had everything going for her. But she was literally crippled with fear. Um, she desperately wanted to travel around the world and see all of these wonderful places she'd heard about and read about, but she was terrified of flying, so she never went anywhere. She desperately longed for a relationship, to be in love, but she was terrified of being in relationship and of being hurt, so she never entered into relationship with anyone for fear. Jesus comes into that locked room on Easter night into the midst of his disciples' fear. And three times in this gospel, he says, peace, peace be with you. My peace be with you. And then it says that he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. This is almost like the gospel of John's version of the Pentecost story. Jesus breathes on them the Holy Spirit to not just verbally wish them peace, but to literally pass the peace that he has inside himself and have it enter into them. We know that both in Hebrew and Greek, the same word for breath is spirit. In, in Hebrew, it's ruach, she, the Holy Spirit, wind, breath, spirit. In Greek, it's pneuma, with a P, pneuma, like pneumonia, having to do with lungs. Um, it means breath, wind, spirit. And so Jesus breathes on his disciples the Holy Spirit, and somehow he must have given them peace, because then he sends them out, and they go. They leave the their fear, they leave the locked rooms, they go out into the world as his witnesses to share with others the new Easter life they have found with him. Now, Thomas isn't there, and so poor Thomas um, goes down in history forever as doubting Thomas. But surely he's like many of us. Who's, uh, he gets home, and, and they say, oh, Jesus appeared to us, 
and he's alive, he's resurrected, and he says, unless I put my finger in the nail holes in his hands, unless I touch where the sword pierced his side, unless I see and, and experience this for myself, I cannot believe. And so we're told that Jesus comes back a week later, which is what today is, so a week after Easter. And Jesus shows Thomas his hands, his feet, his side. He says, here, touch, feel, experience it for yourself. And Thomas does. And then he says, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, you believe because you, you touched, you saw, you experienced for yourself. Blessed are those who do not see and yet still believe. So Jesus, in a sense, is speaking to us because we didn't experience Christ physically present on this earth when he was a human being and walked this earth. But we rely on the witnesses of those who did, and we still believe. Or do we? Do our fears and our doubts and our anxieties sometimes get the better of us? Well, sisters and brothers, let's be truthful. We are in the midst of a global pandemic. And um, I confess that I've had my moments of fear and of panic. Uh, we taped 60 Minutes, we watched 60 Minutes faithfully, but we did not watch it Easter Eve on Sunday. We watched it a day or two later. And it was all about the coronavirus. And I confess that that night I had trouble going to sleep. They talked in that episode about how people who have the coronavirus can't breathe and, and they're gasping for breath and, they, um, and there aren't enough ventilators and all of this. And... I was trying to fall asleep and I was like, oh no, I couldn't imagine um, not being able to breathe, how very frightening that is. But then I remembered whenever I have trouble sleeping, which is very rare in my case, I sleep really well. But whenever I do have trouble, I do a breathing meditation because again, breath, means spirit, Holy Spirit. So when I need to calm down, when I need to really breathe, really calm myself, uh, just as Jesus said, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you, and he breathed on his disciples. So as I breathed in, I do this very, very slowly, and I pray, Holy Spirit, breath of life, fill me with your peace. And then as I exhale, Holy Spirit, breath of life, breathe through me out into this world to others to bring them peace. So I was able to fall asleep. But sisters and brothers, I wanted to share that simple meditation with you in your times of fear or anxiety, because we will have our moments during this global pandemic. So I pray that you would find that simple breathing meditation, knowing that it is Christ's peace itself that breathes in us, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit herself that breathes in us. And try that meditation. I, I, I swear by it. It helps me whenever I feel anxious. But I also wanted to share with you some other lessons um, that this gospel for today gives us, because the, the closing words are, um, the, the gospel writer says, these are written, these gospels are written in order that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. And so as we enter more deeply into this week, second week of Easter, how can that resurrected life that Christ came to give us 
live in us and breathe in us and give us um, a new way of living our lives. So I'm going to give you three examples. One, I was speaking with someone who struggles with uh, anxiety and um, and over and so is worse, of course, during this pandemic. And so I said, stop and pause for a moment. I said, right now at this very moment, are you in pain? He said, no. Are you, um, are you uh, in danger in any way? He said, no. Uh, I just ate dinner. I'm comfortable. I'm in my home. I don't have anything to worry about right in this moment. And I said, well then, one of the lessons of all of this is for us to not think tomorrow, not think next fall, not think, oh my goodness, when is this going to end, not think of the future, but to think, as all the great spiritual leaders in every faith tradition tell us, to live right now here in this present moment. So one lesson we can all learn from this is to live right here, right now, in this moment. A second lesson. Um, some friends came by yesterday, and, and they just parked in front of my house, and um, they uh, brought me a, a beautiful gift, and we just wanted to see each other. We used social distancing. We stood far apart. But how, what a joy it was just to see some friends. And um, so really a second lesson or a gift from all of this is how dear our relationships are to us. How deeply important our relationships with the people we love um, I have two children who are super attentive always and checking in on us. I have a third uh, child who's very introverted and, you know, just doesn't, you know, keep in touch as much. But during this whole pandemic, um, she's been calling very, very faithfully just to check in. And so I thanked her and I said, I really appreciate how attentive you've been to us lately. And uh, I think all of us are doing that more and more because we realize how deeply we appreciate our relationships. That also goes for our larger communities. Of course, I'm the pastor of a church, and here in our community, one of our leaders, one of our council members, suggested that I divide our whole congregation into flocks. And each of our leader has taken our leaders has taken a flock and has called in on about fifteen or twenty people just to check in and see how they're doing and make contact and um, and the the recipients have been very appreciative and grateful but the the leaders who I asked to help with this have thanked me because they said how They've had the most incredible conversations with their sisters and brothers in faith. So that's another um, kind of lesson and learning um, that can come from all of this as we seek to live more as God's Easter people. Even the way I've been posting my sermons online, I had to chuckle. I said to my husband, boy, a lot more people are hearing my sermons than usually show up at church. And, um, and several people have said, you know, I really appreciate you putting them online. You should do that all the time. And I think, yes, I probably should. Even when we go back to regular worship, I should post them for those who are not able to be here. And you, you never do know how many people you can reach. One uh, friend said she's been sharing my messages with people she knows who don't have a church community. And some of them have been really surprised at how much they've enjoyed the messages. So that's another blessing side and learning from all of this. And then finally, um, when life returns to normal, how can we do things differently? 
um, in my Easter sermon, I shared how people staying home and not commuting and not traveling has drastically lowered the emissions. And so the earth is actually healing and able to breathe again. I say this as we approach Earth Day. Um, and so it's making me think of the future because I work some 15, 16 hour days. My poor husband's home alone for all that time. And this has made me say, do I really need to, um, to be there for all of those things for 15, 16 hours in a day? Or can I do some of that from home and be able to be there more for my husband who struggles with Parkinson's disease and I really don't want to leave him alone for that long. And also, I'm helping the earth by not, even though I have a hybrid, but I'm helping the earth by not um, emitting, right, by, by lowering my own personal emissions. So sisters and brothers, the message of Easter continues to be, how can we, because of the new life that Christ rose to give us, how can we continue to live our lives in new ways, filled with that breath of his spirit of new and eternal life and breathing that spirit of peace and of new life to the world. Amen.